No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world, and I'm back with one of my favorite reoccurring guests on this platform, a man whose name rings bells from city to city, block to block. I don't know what made me feel like I had to do this fire Bruce Buffer ass intro, but I'm kind of feeling it. Maybe I should do this for everybody. Sound like a movie or some shit. Ruga! Yes, sir. What's that word? Mr. Ruga Ruga. He a shooter shooter. I ain't no shooter. You hang with the girls. You Dutch, double Dutch and hula hooper. That's a hell rail lyric. That's a line to you? Yeah, double but I mean. Dutch hula hooper. I mean, it's a hell rail lyric from like 20 years ago. I can't really remember exactly how it went. Okay. Yeah. But, you know, it's something. Kick it off early, huh? <laughs> how you doing? I'm good, man. I'm straight. I ate. You did? Yeah, man. I just ate. What'd you eat? Wendy's is good. I don't know where the Wendy's is around here, though. I might have to get on the Wendy's program. I ain't want it, though. Let's, we got to get this mic a little bit more in front of your mouth. Pause. There we yeah, go. pause, man. Um, but listen, yo, I got the memory in my head of Ruga just eating like 500 milligrams of weed candy last time we were on this podcast. That was 500? I think you ate four or five candies at least. I was those, a little more, I think. You, it might have been more. You might have ate more. I was high as hell. A hundred milligrams per candy. I used to eat those things all the time. I don't know how I got away with it. That was Man, crazy. That time, I don't, I don't remember how I got home that day. You were a ball of mush by the time you left here. Yeah. It was pretty cool. I thought it was dope. I like seeing you know somebody be, push the limits on the pod. I was off that sh- you know how you be driving? Yes. And you just forget that you're driving? You ever did that? You know what I'm talking about? You, yeah, do, you, do yeah. little, you do that little jump like, yeah. how the f*** was I even? Well, you ever take drive? a full-on nap while you're driving? Yeah, I did. I've been there, too. One time I was off the drink. When I was doing that drink, tweaking with it, I did some, some of that green mm. Man, I had to drive a 40-minute ride. When I tell you I was so f***ing tired I couldn't stay woke, mm-hmm. I pulled the car over on the side of the e-way, mm-hmm. just went to sleep. Damn. I went to sleep for like... um. I woke up like two hours later. Uh huh. And, and nobody did that. Nobody since. bothered you or anything. No. Nah. That's what you need sometimes. That was some good rest too. Yeah, the best kind of rest. It's out of the e way rest. The best rest is taking a Zan and sleeping for like twelve hours. A Zan. I took a Zan one time. One time. One time. I'm not encouraging it, and the truth is probably that that's not the best kind of sleep. But if you're the type of person who's kind of like high stress, high strung. And you have a hard time chilling out. The Zan will have you. Yeah, yeah Zan will have another telling you what you did. Yeah, and you don't even remember it. Yeah, I've been there. See, that's why I, don't, I, that's, I couldn't do it no more. Yeah, I no. like to remember what I did. Horrible I did. Hey, you know. Yeah, no. If you if yeah. you if you make that part of your life, you're pretty much asking to end up dead or in jail at some point. Yeah. Y'all oh, snapping, man. <laughs> oh, no, y'all got the 50. Okay. You like that? Up, we got a lot of people asking where you can get it. It will be nojumber.com, but I don't know if it's available yet. We got to start cranking them out. Pause. Um, oh, well, this we still go to jail for this type of For the paraphernalia, the fake version. Just being black, you going to jail. Little TJ just got caught up for a, a toy gun. He did? Yeah, they arrested him, and then they proved it was a toy gun, but it, like, didn't matter. Like, his probation or whatever the hell he's on his parole like basically even the toy gun i guess was too That's, much i seen some on the internet with him arguing with the police or something that shit. yeah they must be over on his gun? ass because he got shot in jersey almost killed and then they caught him with like at least two guns since then and then they caught him another time for a toy gun what you doing with a toy gun when you already got all those problems it was a toy gun i believe so yeah was now, it like a prank or just playing or what? I don't know if he was trying to flex for a music video or, or it something. It might have been a proper song for a video or something. New I York hope. City, anything that looks like a gun is a bad idea. Nah, but you know what weed is like? If you're above edibles and then you smoke the blunt, it's like the effect that happens when you ever been like beer drunk and then you take a shot. Or you've been drinking liquor. No, nah, I then you drink beer. That burr. Yeah. But if you do... It's it's like that. It's like somehow consuming it in the different form will just amplify your fucked upness so much. 
Here you go with that with the with that shit again. What? With the questions, with the math questions and shit. <laughs> Why am I always getting hit with this? Well, it's about the amplify it. You you don't know where the amplify? Hmm? You don't know the word amplify? Yeah, I know what amplify is. Amplify is pretty easy. I had somebody in here upset about me for saying demeaning the other amplify, day. Amplify. Amplify. Sound like some shit with a car, some some speakers or something. Man. Well, amplifier is like if you have ever performed at a show, I think. Well, no, that's what they use for a guitar. You probably don't have a guitar at your shows. See, we be getting lost fast, boy. This happened fast. Yeah. Like, how do we end up here? It's happened faster than last time. I got a whole list of weird questions, and you're just, like, taking me out the pocket by just yeah. sending me in all different directions. Now, Let's go. But, you know, that's that's the new wave is, especially with the drill rappers, they'll do an interview, and then they'll have all kinds of nifty little things that they say to sort of, like, not have to answer the questions. Like, Lil Reese saying, uh, oh, I got to do some research on that. He did, like, a whole interview where he said about 100 times, like, oh, I got to do some research on that, which is pretty funny. Like, he gets the interview, but then he just basically doesn't answer any of the questions by just saying he needs to do research. Shit, I guess he got to do some research. Or maybe do some homework. It's another option. Sometimes you got to do research to do your homework. It hits different when you do your homework and your research. Yes, it do. All of a sudden, you're just prepared for the interview. Um, what's what's life like for Ruga these days? What you been up to? I better chill it, man. I better take care of my son, making sure, you know, he in school doing his thing. He just graduated. Just proud of him. And um, taking care of my family. You know, spending more time with my family than anything. I've been working on my album, too. Mm. And, um... I really just been living life, you know, traveling, seeing different shit. Where you traveled? I've been to a lot of places. Like, I can't sit here and name all the places, but. In America? I ain't been out the country yet. Okay. But I'm finna go out the country. Because my boy just, he trying to go out the country and work on that album and shit, man. Ooh. You think that, like, France would motivate you with the album? Japan. Japan. That's why I'm going to Japan, work on that album. You think you, you need to be as far away as possible from all the bullshit? Yeah, sometimes you do. Sometimes you just need to be in a room by yourself sometimes. But I don't know. The reason why I say Japan is just totally different from what the fuck I'm used to. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of isolating. You're out there. You can't talk to anybody. Like, I was just in Europe for a month. That's one thing, though, because, like, everywhere I went, pretty much everybody you encounter speaks English because they're all people who work in hospitality and tourism and shit. But when I went to Japan, I don't think I talked to anybody besides my girl for the whole, the whole, I've been there a couple of times, but the last time I was there, the whole week, I don't think I talked to anybody besides her the whole time. So where you was, uh, I sent you on the internet, you was somewhere, where you was at? Where that was at? We went to Italy, France, and Spain on our honeymoon for a month. Yeah, I was traveling, traveling. Yeah. Speaking of. Are you going to do it? <laughs> I ain't not this early. These not are the yet. rules of the podcast is I have to explain myself yet, to man. every single person. Not yet. Here. I ain't going gonna, gonna to save it. <laughs> At gosh. some point, I might even have to like lay down the ground rules of like, hey, because I never had that. You go do an interview and people are like, is there anything you don't want to talk about? I'm always like, nah, I can talk about whatever. Yeah, but. I might have to do that on my own interviews. Only rule, save it. don't ask me about redacted. No, nah, I don't mind. It's just at a certain point, it might look kind of crazy if I have to talk about it on every podcast. I think you might do. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> you, you think I'm tripping that hard? Nah, oh, you ain't tripping, but you tripping. Mm. You good, but I ain't going to lie. My man, I could talk about it. Go crazy. I don't want to be, you know what I'm saying? But Let loose. I seen it, you know what I'm saying? My mm-hmm. thing is, like, you um, let another, you know what I'm saying, man. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Enter the garage. So it's like... For work. Video content. So content. Yeah. I get it, though. You know what I'm saying? For content. We're but, in the business now. But you this is the thing, though. What if he laid it down better and a motherfucker just like what they like? Well, like better. I mean, even if he did lay it down better, that just means that I personally need to step my game up. Yeah. So that I can, you know, compete. And then what if 
it just feel different once you get in it. No, that's fine. Right. It's been a week. All right. So it may have been reupholstered. I'm going to be honest, though. It was tight as fuck before. It could have used a little straightening. Well, my thing about it is, like, this is just a crazy a question I got. Like, how do it, like, not to be so deep in it, but. Pause. So say, yeah, pause. That's what but, you said, yeah. But, um, like, say if your your daughter, you know what I'm saying, she get older. Why does it always have to come back to the kids? Because it do, man. <laughs> kids matter, you know what I'm saying? But, right. but everybody can accept that me and my girl, in our own personal life, we can do whatever we want. That's fine. So then people always have to pivot out of it and be like, well, what is your kid going to think one day? But you that you can't even lie. That's something that probably go across your mind too. But you know? I, I don't think this conversation is harder to have than the conversation about like why me and my girl were doing it on the internet with other women in the first place. Okay, say you know? if it was to come down to it and yo your daughter do get older and see it. She and will. it's like yeah. and it's like she might have to go to school and deal with people bashing her about it or anything. You know what I'm saying? And then it's like it's like what you did kind of trickled on to her life. You know what I'm saying? But it's life, though. I get it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I get it, bro. It's like we only human shit. Motherfuckers do that. You got your own purpose of what you do. Not judging you or nothing. But, right. Because I've listened like a, to um, other podcasters talk about, like, dealing with the fact that they don't like that they do podcasts where they talk about all kinds of nasty shit. And, like, that's just, that's just talking. Making extreme explicit jokes and stuff and they don't like the fact that their kids might one day know about them making these nasty jokes on the podcast and telling <laughs> these crazy ass stories or whatever mine's like that but it's all on camera now that being said i don't give a fuck personally because i just feel like listen being my kid in the first place if it wasn't for this stuff it would already be tough because yes you are gonna be going to the mall and you're going to be seeing me treated like a fucking hero by people and people are going to take pictures, whatever. That's already weird enough for a kid. But then for them to at some point realize like, oh, also your parents have been naked fucking each other on the internet and also people hate them for it. People like really fucking hate your parents for having done this stuff. Will it be complicated? Sure. But, you know, Kim K's kids are doing all right, right? Yeah. And also, my kid's but, not going to school in South Central. She's going to the best private schools in the country, so. But I get it, though, man. Yeah. Like, at the end of the day, it's a profession. That's what I'm they saying. They wouldn't have made it a profession if it wasn't. It's, it is it's legal for a reason. The world is getting more open-minded. I'm not saying it's going to be the easiest thing in the world, but also I'm not going to turn down millions of dollars right now doing something that I want to do, that I'm having fun doing, just because of the fact that maybe one day my kid is going to have to deal with the ramifications of who their her parents are, you know? Mm-hmm. It is what it is. Your kids are going to have to deal with people saying, like, well, I listen to this song, and your dad said he had six bodies, and he shot so-and-so in the head. and It's kind of similar. It'd be a little weird. It's just, Not it's as just, weird. It's just different. Because you, you could say, I was just fucking around. I was just saying shit. But you could actually say it's <laughs> entertainment. Exactly. You know I can't say that. It's kind of just like a I movie. mean, I can't say it was acting. It was entertainment. Like, we did this for that purpose. It's kind of just like a movie when they got a sex scene or something. It is basically, yeah. But I mean, I enjoyed it. I was there for a reason. Enough of that. You know, I <laughs> enough leave, of that. <laughs> leave it alone, man. We ain't, we're going to leave it where it's at, man. One day, I'm going to have talked about it so much that I won't ever have to talk about it any, anymore. One day. Coming soon. Um, okay, so you're posting in what, Vegas? Hmm? You're in Vegas? No, I'm in Cali right now. In Cali. Where you stay normally? Where I stay? You don't stay in California, right? Where you stay? Around here. Around here. Around here. Those are good questions right there. <laughs> Where you stay? What's your what's your social? I'm trying to get the basics. Oh, shit. I'm trying to get the basics out of the way. Um, Listen. Your man's yellow stays in Vegas. I was I wondering if you were staying stay. in Vegas too. I don't know where he stay. I mean, he's pretty open about it, don't you think? I don't know. Is he? I don't know. I love that you, you've got this fucking weird ass demeanor for this podcast, though. This is this is gonna be interesting. You're not even at least last time you could have blamed it on the weed edibles. What? Crip Mac out there. You ever met Crip Mac? No, I ain't never met him. What do you think of him? He um seemed cool. You know, I be seeing him on the podcast and shit. Yeah. He seemed real blunt, a blunt person. 
He cool though. Shit, he seemed like he a street nigga. He's certainly a blunt person. That's a fact. Um, okay. But when you decided that you wanted to come through, what was the stuff at the forefront of your brain that you wanted to talk about today? I just wanted to chill. You know what I'm saying? I fuck with you as a friend. You my you my friend, man. We chilling. That's true. We are we are great friends. I uh, stopped smoking. You stopped smoking? Pretty much. For real? I'm not gonna lie. I smoked a spliff the other day though. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Do you be sneaking? Snuck back up in there. Yeah. I got a weed pen, so if I ever need to get a little high to go to bed. Just rely on the weed pen. So really, you that was, you didn't stop. Um, the whole time I was on that vacation for a month, I had the weed pen, <coughs> and that was it. And then I got back, and I've been good. But then Saturday night, I was just like, you know what? Let me let me let me fuck with this spliff. Well, from the sounds of it, well, I just calculated. When did you stop? Well, I don't count the weed pen. Let me be real with you, because I actually one thing I've realized through all this. Hot in weed though. Sort of. Sometimes. Depends how you hit it. It's weed. You just put, let's say it again. What is called? The what? The weed pen. The weed pen. Yeah. I just, okay, I don't count it because for me, one thing I've realized is that the tobacco addiction was more of a thing than the weed addiction in the sense that I think that the weed, the tobacco and how that made me kind of slumped and sort of. I don't know. I feel like the tobacco was, if anything, like a little bit more powerful than the weed. And that that is really the thing that I'm happy to have mostly eliminated. I really feel like I have a hair in my mouth. Stop eating that ass, man. Yeah, you feel the whole brown. My booty whole brown. Um, I don't think my girl has hair on her ass. I'm still trying to get it out. Maybe it's a tiny little minuscule skinny hair. So now I'm realizing that this is the kind of interview that you're going to make me do because you, 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 right before I sat down, you're like, don't ask me about any street shit. No, I ain't say street shit. And I now you're high like as hell. Relevant shit like that's just not just. Yeah, but the thing you claim that we you good said, though, you know, we ain't. I'm not saying that you're being yeah. a fucking dictator here or anything, but the, the thing that you brought up was like somebody, a past affiliate of yours, who sort of ran his mouth about you in a recent interview. You don't want to clap back at him? Clap back? Like what you mean? Verbally? Clap back. My definition of clap back is totally different from yours. Verbally clap back. Not... What is that going to get me? Um, I mean, if he had his say, his say about you, don't you want to have your say about him or at least like Listen, correct the record? My mama always taught me. The best reaction is no reaction. Mm, that doesn't seem like it's really been much of a thing in the drill community. A lot of reactions. That's, that's the drill, you know. But as my as a as a as a, as my own man, you know what I'm saying. I I don't be paying attention to that shit, bro. I got so much shit going on. Well, let's let's just see what happens if if I just say what I'm referring to. Billionaire Black did a DJU interview. And he kind of shaded you. And basically, he actually said at one point that you never did anything for him or your family. And then he said that he saw you in Vegas, but he kept it pushing. He didn't, uh, he didn't try to engage. He said I ain't never did enough for who? My family? For, for him or your family? First, first of all, I don't even really like, he don't even know me. So you weren't super you tight back in the wait, day or anything? You don't, like, like on some 100 shit, like, being that black was cool, you know what I'm saying? But um, it was always like a, when I met up with him, it was always like a mutual thing. I was I was with another person. Right. See, you know what I'm saying? It was never like, call billionaire, let's, I'm finna link with billionaire. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It was never like that type of relationship. But um, I don't pay attention to that shit, what people say, bro, like, uh, especially saying something like that, I know you don't know what you're talking about. So it's like, it's no no reason for me to respond to that type of shit. Like, take care of all my family. Did you already know that he had an issue with you prior to this interview clip coming out? What? Like, an issue? Yeah. yeah it was some, some little sh- goofy shit went on, but that shit light, bro. Okay. Because he, uh, he, he mentioned, like, seeing you in Vegas. Was Yellow the intermediary f- for seeing each other? Yeah, Yellow uh, was there. Yellow the what? 
I linked with Yella. Like I say, I linked with Yella, and he was with me. Like, you feel me? Okay. But he was with like a couple of his homies. Shit, it wasn't none. We ate food, and we went on about our day. You didn't really talk to him or anything, though. You weren't like thinking. No, about it wasn't it? like nothing really to talk about. Like everything was said was said. You know, already on the internet, we had our talk on the internet on live publicly. Mm -hmm. So everybody kind of know what happened with that. Right. Yeah. So uh, to you, it's nothing. It ain't nothing to me, bro. Is it just because this situation is small, or is it because you're just at a place in your life where you're not really trying to be doing all this back and forth with people? It's not that it's – it's kind of like, like, yeah, it's like, come on, bro. I ain't thinking about that shit, bro. I got investments and shit. I got to make sure I stay on and make sure my money flowing. Mm. If that shit ain't getting me no check, I ain't finna be putting no energy into that shit like that. It is wild, though, if you think, you know, rewind the clock, like, 10, 12 years, there was, like, this time period where all these dudes from Chicago just come out and start making waves off of basically making music, dissing each other. And now, obviously, there is, like, a new generation of kids coming out doing the same thing, a lot of people from back in the day doing the same thing. But then you also have a lot of people who basically either didn't make it in music or their music career is kind of small, but they're kind of trying to build a name off having a YouTube channel or, you know, doing interviews or whatever, dissing people and sort of just stirring shit up. In some cases, even talking about who killed who, stuff that isn't even public, et cetera. How do you feel about that development? Honestly, it it been like this. Yeah. It's been like this for years, bro. Like, this shit ain't nothing new. It's just, like... It's, honestly, it was worse than back then. Mm. This shit, like, it's the same shit to me, like, what I'm seeing. That's how it ain't nothing. You still watch all this shit? You still invested in it? I watch I watch music. I always watch Chicago music. I'm big on Chicago music. Honestly, I barely even listen to, listen to the big industry rappers and shit like that. I listen to some of them, but I be listening to Chicago music. Who want to come up, just listen. I like to see that shit. See who see who coming with that heat from the rack. You mostly interested in the street stuff though, or you listen to everything? Nah, I listen to everything. I, I listen to R and B. I like old school music. Shit, I, I, I like rap, drill, reggae. I like all are music. There, are there people popping out of Chicago making non drill music? But Honestly, I'm, I'm just not I really don't catching. Think so it. everybody from Chicago, like, well, majority of the people from Chicago, they. Rapping, you feel me, doing mm -hmm. the drill thing. I haven't really seen no, like, different type of super styles, you know what I'm saying, that just be like, damn, you know, that's... No, nah, I just, matter of fact, I just posted this guy the other day. I forgot his name. He, he be on that type of time. What, just more artistic with it? Yeah, yeah, he like an artist. He be on some singing type shit. But that shit hard, though. There are, there's, like, a long history of so many unique artists coming out of Chicago, but it's been a while since... We really seen somebody come up. I always, you know, I always look at Cole Bennett, and he, he's a genius regardless of how you think of it. But the fact that he came up in Chicago, built a business off of hip hop in Chicago, mm -hmm. but never really went into doing any kind of street related stuff at all, any drill stuff at all. Like, granted, now he's had some drill rappers like on his platform, but like, you know, not not in a sense of them talking about mm -hmm. anything like that at all. Well, sometimes it's just you got to understand it's like it is his platform. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? He can do for – he get to choose if he want to deny this person or that person. If he feel like it'll jeopardize him or I don't know or he just don't like that type of shit, that's his preference, you know? Like, mm -hmm. But I like I, I, I haven't seen no street shit neither, though. But I don't know. Shit, he like what he like, shit, I guess. Yeah, it would have just been an easy route for him. I mean, it certainly it kind of fell on our laps to just end up talking to a lot of but different street but rappers. But it seemed like the route he did take kind of got him way bigger, you know what I'm saying? Because honestly, it's bigger than it's just the street shit, you know? It's like, look where he at. He'd shoot videos for Eminem and shit. And exactly. Like, ain't no looking back after that. Like, it's just like. I mean, I guess Juice World really got a point at him as like the last great talent that came out of Chicago in terms of doing something that wasn't really street related, especially. 
I don't know who's going to come out that'll even hold anywhere near a candle to that. Yeah. Oh. But you think that that was that shit really cracking in Chicago? Like when it came out, you think like the average kid in Chicago was loving Juice World or oh, Juice World? Yeah. Yeah, Juice World was hot. Like I used to listen to Juice World. Shit, hell yeah. Drill fans were like taking a little break to tap oh, in with them. They liked that shit. Everybody liked Juice World. The numbers speak for itself. Shit, yeah, everybody sorry. loved that shit. One thing about Chicago, if you coming up in Chicago, everybody gonna support you. Mm. Chicago gonna support. That's a fact. Um, <laughs> just to finish up this narrative, though. I have it in my notes uh, that that you told billionaire Black he was a rat at one point. You really think that? What the billionaire he a rat? Yeah. At the end of the day, we kind of we doubling back. Uh huh. We ain't got to double back. You know what I'm saying? Let's keep. We gonna trip. We gonna trip forward, looking backwards. How the fuck is that an answer to what I just asked you? <laughs> You got to pick up what I'm putting down. <sighs> you got to double back. I don't understand. You're going to trip forward Flush it out backwards. Oh, you mean like literally in the course of this interview or just in, in life in general? Just in life. Mm. Yeah. You a Blazing Doll fan? Oh, I wouldn't say I'm like a fan, but. You see the talent? She she cool. She, she know how to rap. Yeah, she got some good shit. Right. I just had her in here the other day. Yeah. Yeah. That's what's up. Shit. Hell yeah. She was wearing, come up too. wearing Fabio yeah. Foreign's chain. Who? Fabio Foreign from New York. Yeah. She was rocking his chain. It was kind of. Are they cool? No, absolutely not. Mm. He uh, he got his chain took in, in the rack somehow. And now uh, she's been wearing it, doing all her interviews and stuff, which I never really seen a girl pushing that kind of time, you know? Yeah. Like a lot of the females be, that's how they be in the rack, bro. It be like, shit, it's some aggressive females. Like you can hear it in their raps. Mm. It's crazy. I mean, she comes from a crazy ass background as well. You know about her mom and shit? No, nah, I don't know about her mom. No, I, don't know. I probably shouldn't explain the whole entire situation, but there's a whole, there's a whole thing that kind of makes sense of why she's a street rapper. I won't get into it. Um, okay. So w where are you at with FYBJ Main? Because he has taken some shots at your producer who, well, is that, is that accurate, your producer? Yeah. Yeah, that's my guy. He's he been producer for me for a while now, for about, what, for some years, years. Okay. And so J Main calls him. Funky man, you tell me. You just told me that that's like a diss of somebody specifically. I'm I'm not in on that that joke. Who's who's that a, a diss towards? Oh, like it ain't a diss. Like it's more so just like calling a motherfucker goofy or lame or something oh, okay. like that. Oh, okay. I'm thinking Thunky's got to be somebody that I shouldn't nah. be just using the term all willy nilly. Nah, that's my boy. He was talking about Digi, right? Digi Prada. So he just changed it from Digi to Thunky. I guess yeah. He said what he wanted to say. Okay, let's get him in here. Let's talk to Digi. <laughs> clap it up, man. Clap it up, Adam, man. Clap it up. Man. Yeah, oh, we got okay. Digi in the building, man. We got Digi in the building. I was clapping at a different time than you. Digi in the building. Digi, a.k.a. Are you embracing this nickname at all? Nah. You don't fuck with it? Nah. Tell us the story. Nah. Let's get away from that. Okay. How, AKA how, Digi Prada. Okay, Digi Prada. How did this all come about? Like, in terms of, like, because you, you got his, his YouTube channel deleted, allegedly. Right. Why did you do this? How did this happen? Can I lower this? Yeah, sure. Sorry. All good. All right, so basically, the reason why I deleted it was because we was working for some years, mm -hmm. recording them in my house, everything. Okay. Recording one on, like, literally, like, person to person. And he basically just stole all the money, stole all the royalties from all the back end, didn't leave anything. He added me to one song, and that one song, I saw how much money it did. Did a couple thousand in a month, so I looked at all the other songs that what's going on here? Like why why I've been reaching out for years, sent lawyers at him, sent my manager at him, sent everything. I have texts, DMs, emails, everything. Just no reply, just went ghost after that one song. And we did, you know, we we was doing some millions of views. We had over two songs on YouTube with a couple million, you know. So it was uh it was just sad that he had to go that way, you know, like the YouTube strikes was really to wake him up and to come reach out to me. After that, he still didn't reach out. 
So at that point, I'm not gonna allow another grown man to eat off my music and me just work for free. Right. You know, so it was the fact that we had I think it was like sixteen songs, right? Uh huh. And And you produced them all or I produced all okay. of them. I produced all of them. And so then you you just assumed that he was gonna have you given proper credit. Not assume, that's just like That's he, how it's normally done. That's in the how industry. That, exactly in the industry. It's business. Yeah. This is this isn't it's nothing. It's just business. That's all it is. At the end of the day, but it's you, about the principle. You guys, how close of friends were you? I mean, we weren't like friends. We were just. It was business. Like just I said, it was together. business. It's not like we. It's not like you know, kick it outside of music. We didn't do any of that. Okay. If we were, if we were together, it was because of music. This right. was like you know a couple times, but. And so, basically, you just filed the copyright strikes to try to get them to like. Right. That was break supposed bread. to be. The, that was supposed to be the wake up call. Like. Like, I right, reply to these emails, reply to these lawyer emails, these DMs. Right. Still nothing. Just went on the internet, ranting and ranting, acting like this was a setup or something. And it was, it was just, like, I gave him the opportunity so many times to just come reach out, call ever, me. Did he ever, like, tell that part of the story? Like, No, I mean, I haven't, no. Yeah, he doesn't really get into detail about I, it. I, know, I noticed that he, he wants to, you know, he tried to avoid it. Right, because it's 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 all about the principle. It's not like I'm out here just dunking YouTube's, you know. I yeah. just dunked his because it, he, Wait, he didn't thunk, reach out. That's what thunk means. Thunk nah. is like the steal, or you just did that. Nah, I just I thunked his YouTube. <laughs> that was a crazy word to use. Right now. Are you? <laughs> but it is like, like when I feel like I was too. I feel like I was too generous. I thunked his YouTube. I feel like I was too generous. I feel like I wait because this was over three years. I've been reaching out for over three years. This right. isn't just like a. I woke up hot one day and just was mad. Was like, oh, I'm gonna take his YouTube down. This was a, a process, and I didn't tell anybody. Mm. Ruger didn't even know until all this happened, you know. So, right with him yeah, trying I to. Yeah, out on the internet when he found out. Shit. Yeah, exactly, Maybe, exactly. Uh, I seen yeah, posted exactly. on the internet, but when he got to talking about it and shit, but I just never understood why he keep throwing me in the damn mix. I ain't did nothing. Yeah, yeah. right. No one, no, literally, no one knew. I shit. just it's it was more so yeah. from the sounds of it. Pay for your beats, man. Pay for your beats. And even you know, if you have these did. problems in the long run, future artists, pay for y'all beats, man. Make sure these producers is taken care of, bro. They really be the ones putting in all the groundwork for you, and you can't just shit on them like that. You know what I'm saying? Collect all the revenue and then don't hit their hand because this is the business at the end of the day. Everybody doing this shit for a reason. Everybody mm -hmm. trying to feed their family, bro. So, and producers always get the short end of the stick, or, or a lot of times artists kind of try to fuck them so over. So this, this is what happens is... The, these distribution companies, they have small distribution companies, DistroKit, TuneCore. They right. allow artists to upload their music at their own will. They could grab any beat off YouTube and go upload it, and they can claim whatever percentage. Mm -hmm. So that's what he was doing. He was just claiming 100%. You're supposed to leave 50 for your producer unless you pay up an up free front. Once you pay an up, like an upfront fee, then basically that's what you're paying for is, is for the lease, depending on the terms. Mm -hmm. So when there's no lease, the producer is entitled to 50%. But if you want to... Like, if you have a close relationship, you could talk things out. Mm. You could write. You could write certain agreements. It's all about moving forward with each other, not just money hungry and, you know. A so lot of, he blames you for making them homeless. Yeah. Is that way on your conscience? I mean, it's like he really just clowning, bro. Like, he got <laughs> kids. I don't think he, a grown man would be saying he's homeless with kids. Like, right. on, the, on the Internet, you know, like, I think it's all a game. It's all for play, you know. Right, because especially when the channel got taken down, he took, he took good. I would say he took a good. Um, what do you call it? The timing of it when it happened, he took. He took. Uh, I'm trying to think how to explain it. Like he just took advantage of the situation when it happened, and he just ran with it. He knew his YouTube was going to get taken down, so that's when the st the trolling started coming out. Mm. I felt like this is what kind of led to the trolling was because he knew his music was getting taken down. So I didn't mean to take all of his music down. I took down what was mine, and then the, the distribution companies, they did, they handled what they wanted to do. They did what they wanted to do. It's interesting because, at least based on looking at his current YouTube channel, I can't imagine that losing the YouTube channel made him lose that much money. It might, maybe like a 1000 a month type shit, you know? Okay. Like maybe... Two thousand. I mean, that's, that's just my guess. I when know. I looked at it, it was yeah, it was uh, like thirty six million views. 
Oh really? Hundred thousand subscribers. I guess he may, he maybe. And you would a think that before. someone, if someone built that up, you would want to reach out and fix this problem, right? Especially when I'm giving you an option over and over and over and telling your people like, yes, we could work it out. I don't like the money's gone. Obviously, the money's gone. Right. I don't care about the money, but you could. We could work something out. You know, there's ways to work things out. He could give me a song I could put on my channel. Let mm. me collect for a back end, or there's things to work things out. But didn't reach out. Nothing. Just. Bruger, you got a cold-hearted savage on your team right here. It's just business. It's Left just, a it's motherfucker just homeless. It's Come just, on. Rah. Nah, it's more so about yeah. it's a smart person. Shit, he's smart. He know the business, bro. Everybody like, I don't know. She just go about shit different. You can't knock a person if they, that's what they want to do. That's he want to go about it the legit way. You feel me? Mm. I respect the shit. Yeah. And the other day, you just gotta like, like me and Digi, we gotta. You know, different type of relationship. Like, Digi reached out to me back when I made Blickathon. He made the Blickathon beat. Mm. He reached out, like, let's get in the studio. And he paid for the studio, everything. I worked with him, you know what I'm saying? We it's built crazy. from there. We was just working a lot. Then it started to hang it with him without music, you know what I'm saying? We wasn't doing me. We was just chilling, smoking, and just laughing and shit. I, and then we built a relationship beyond, you know, beyond music. You identify so, as white? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm white. Okay, I'm I was white boy. I just didn't want to call you. My white. family's Mexican, Italian, but you know. Oh, okay. White. Is this like your first white friend or? No, yeah. <laughs> no. I was probably one of them too. You still my friend. Yeah, but not the first white friend. But um, <laughs> no, nah, I got a lot of white friends. Man. I want to be George Washington. Some good white people out here, like my homie Billy. Billy, Billy, who shoot the videos. Billy Cock, he white. Right. That's my guy. That's like one of my. I'm going to his wedding. Bro invited me to the wedding. Wow, must be That's nice. That's my guy, man. I felt special, man. Damn, where's my wedding invite? Right right there, man. Man. I'm a wedding guy now. I just go to weddings. I'm a wedding crasher. Go to other people's weddings. I don't even I like know who they weddings, are. Though. Weddings be lit because they throw on the um, GDs in the dough. Do they? In Not at my wedding. <laughs> Why you got to play GDs in the dough at your wedding? Dude, we went very out of our way to make a list of songs that they were going to play at the wedding, and then they just... Had some random ass DJs playing fucking stupid ass songs I never even heard before. If y'all would have played GDs in the dough, they would have been in that bitch. They didn't let the GDs in the dough. I looked up at one point, they were playing Pump It Up. I'm like, how are you gonna play Joe Budden at my wedding? Now, That's granted, what I was mainly getting videos of weddings. He's not my biggest op or nothing, but like, you know, what if they played somebody I genuinely hate? What if I hate them and they play their song? That could really fuck up the wedding. That'd be a real problem for you. I don't think it's nobody you genuinely hate, man. Yes, you sir. seem like a yeah. good guy, man. No, but I hate people. I don't think I some people I hate. Who? I'm, a, I'm a drill rapper. Who? I'm not going to name them. Who you hate? It doesn't even come to the front of my mind, but there's a lot of people. Hey, oh, oh, if you boop, can boop, remember, boop, you hate somebody. Are, yeah. And if you could get to a point where you hate them, you know them. You got to kill them. No, nah, not kill them. Send someone to kill them. No. Nah, you. Uh, crazy. No? No? <laughs> <laughs> Take their YouTube down, man. Head out, Take man. Take down. their YouTube <laughs> But what happens when you, when a big platform like you gets a copyright strike? Is that uh, is that a, like it's a no brainer? Like you just know it's gonna not resolve because you know I there's mean, a lot of processes to the copyright. You know, they there's a lot of different times because you know a video could get taken right, right. down because there's a song, or it could just get claimed. I've had videos I uploaded where somebody fucked up and used the wrong song, and then it just gets claimed. Mm -hmm. And at some point, you're gonna go take it out or whatever. But one. I have a couple of catastrophic memories, which is one time I was on stream right after Mac Miller died, and we watched Mac Miller's Tiny Desk performance, I believe it was, from NPR, and that got our fucking channel like a real serious strike, but we luckily were able to talk to NPR, and they took it down. But, yeah, there's been a few little random ones like that over the years. Or I remember one time I was on stream, and it was like the new Tyler, the Creator album came out, and I don't even normally like listen to Tyler, the Creator like that, but I was like, oh, I'm going to listen to this. Listen to like four or five songs in a row. Got a strike on the channel. I was like, what the fuck is this bullshit? Should have told strikes, me. Out. I had no idea. But he tried to Donald Trump you by giving you this nickname. Funky man, I'm going to give him a nickname. You kind of like it though? It's good branding? No comment. <laughs> I, I didn't think that, you know, the internet would know me as Donkey Man. Right. So I'm going to try it. I'm going to say this right now. It's Digi Prada. Right. I don't want to be in public and be, oh, that's that's Dunky Man. That's Dunky. Oh, bro, what? Because you see me when I'm doing the interview with him, he keeps saying it, and I'm like, who, who is it? And, like, and he, he finally did. said Ruga's producer. I'm like, okay, well, at least now I have a 
general I idea. I feel like you said that, though. You said that's... Well, yeah, because I had seen him say it. Try to get right. out of him, or, but he just wouldn't. Yeah. He I just can't. wants to give you a nickname. So now that it. so now that you heard, you know what I'm saying, the whole situation as far as that, how do you feel about it? Like, it's kind of gangster. You, how do you take it? I understand, like, you, so yeah. with, with hearing from both parties, who was wrong? Oh, he was definitely in the wrong, yeah. He was in the wrong, but he wanted to be given a pass to be able to do something wrong because – He's the rapper in the situation. Gotta, or whatever. Like, this is Mr. J Man. Just, you know, do your business right. Handle your shit right. It'll be right. You know what I'm saying? I ain't got no, me personally, I ain't got no smoke with J Man. You feel me? My only thing was just don't be, don't keep, you know what I'm saying? Don't be trolling me and shit. Adam, do you think he get his, name, his channel back? Hold on. And my playing bad. with, you know mm. what I'm saying? Like, you on, on lives and shit with my pops playing, saying little slick shit. It's simple as just about respect at the end of the day, you feel me? Like, right. I had nothing but respect for J-Man, you feel me? I never said nothing bad about him, never played with him on no internet shit, never even been that type. And when I did meet him, he wasn't like that, you feel me? So it's like, that's just what it was. I had called J-Man and told, Yella had called him for me, so I ain't have his number. And I just told him, like, bro, just stop, you know what I'm saying, playing on me like that, you know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't do that because I don't play with you like that, you feel me? But um, even though he, I know he be trolling and shit, and that's the way he get his bread, you feel me? And I, don't, I respect how you get your money, but we just had, we just, I just felt like when I met you, we had a different type of relationship. So don't be on the internet trolling like we really be like this. You know what I'm saying? I don't be playing like that, bro. See, the thing is, is I'm pretty sure if you get three copyright strikes at the same time, that that can just nuke your channel. And that there's no coming back from it. That's it's, what I've always heard. The but channel's not in the database somewhere or they can get removed. I've been told that I could remove the strikes, but I don't know after oh, it's really? actually gone. Yeah. Like, I think he had, I think it was a, it gave me like a day limit to where he could respond or I could re, I could withdraw all the strikes. And really? I told him that. I told him I could withdraw all of them. And he just Still didn't, nothing. Still no, nothing. No attempt. Nothing. You would try to call through people and like, Damn. bro, like, I, I'm a phone call away. That's wild. Because yeah. then like, the, then the victim narrative don't really make that much sense. Cause it's I, like you could have. I gave him so many. I gave him too many opportunities. Mm. I really should have. Like labels nowadays will just anybody, major producers will just. You got seventy two hours, not three years, over a course of trying to work things out. You know, so mm. I was definitely too nice. The only people's channels I've been able to have zapped are people who are like fully re-uploading like clips of our content. Okay. And I've had a few of them, but just down. Yeah, but. I mean, does YouTube ever hit you back for more information? You have to keep, because I've gone through, they've hit me back four or five times, and I just have to keep putting my registration number through. I never even did it. I just send my hitter, Josh. I'm like, hey, Josh, okay, yeah, I need Josh. you to run a play. Take this motherfucker out. Josh is dunking YouTube. Josh is my funky man, yeah. <laughs> so I never really had to be the one clicking the buttons, but yeah. I would like to get in there, get my hands dirty, catch a few bodies, you know. Yeah, and producers don't do this just to anybody. This is this That's is a, a few whom? this is certain situation. Just putting that out there. I don't want producers taking this the wrong way, and everybody's starting to take people's YouTube's down now. That's not what I'm trying to promote. I'm trying to promote stand on business about the principle. Everybody's got to work. Everybody's got to eat. But you never had an artist try to do you like this before. This is the first time somebody did anything sus to you. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah. But I mean, hey, it's true. The producers get the short end of the stick a lot of times, and there's, you know, the the fans are just so in love with the the rapper, the on camera talent that they just don't really give a fuck, right. you know. Even if it's like obvious that they did the producer dirty, you know. So I respect it at the end right. of the day, you know. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Um, okay, who else have you worked with besides Ruga? Anybody in particular we should know about? Any what what more do we need to know about the Digi Prada lore? I had some songs with FBG Duck, some big songs. I'm That's from 63rd. Mm, oh, made wow. that one. Um, got a, a couple on Ruga's album with with uh, some features too. Mm. Proud to have those. Nice. Got some unreleased too. Got some. Um, got a bunch of solos with him too. You know what's crazy is I actually have more songs with Duck than Ruga. Really? Which is crazy. Yeah. Damn, you were working that much we with him before. Yeah, yeah. Wow. He, he introduced me to Ruga, to Duck. Damn, what was it like for you when you found out he passed? I was I was downtown with uh sixteen actually we was like a couple blocks away and the way the internet made it seem was, you know he was okay he was just fucked up to see, you know the way everybody was posting that he was still you know he was still up it was just, 
just messed up how the police just leave them there. Wow. But yeah, we were. Yeah. That's crazy. But you, you don't think the GDs are grimy? You've had good experiences with these guys for the most part? Oh, man, these guys. I'm on no jumper right now, bro. That's a good point. <laughs> you yeah. feel me? So. Well, we got yeah, fucking nah. Donald Trump, J. Main over there giving you a nickname to man. kind of thank for that partially, right? Nah, man, everything's cool over here, man. If anything, he he told me I could work with whoever I want. Just just move right. That's all. Uh -huh. Just move right. They just want to see me win. That's all. They just want to see me win. That's dope. Yeah. What a guy. Yeah, that's, that's just how it's supposed now. to. That's just how it should be. You know. Sure. I feel like producers shouldn't have to choose sides or even cameraman and all this. It's just work with who you want to work with. Just move right. And if you really have a producer you like working with, you should very much go out of your way to treat them as good as possible because right. that, that's the secret sauce. A lot of the biggest rappers are kind of like there because they had a really great relationship with producers early on. You know, like they had their producer that they, uh, you know, were building with and that helped give them a signature sound. It's hard to blow up as a rapper if you're always kind of chasing behind other people's sounds it and it's is. like, oh, now I want a Pooh Shiesty beat right. because Pooh Shiesty's going crazy and it's hard to really stand out. Whereas so like the, the people who are really deep in this game and really know how to treat the game, they fucking are, are treat producers like gold, I feel like. They go very out of their way to always be looking for the next top dude, you know? For sure, for sure. I feel like it, it's just, it's, they're, they're marketable too. It makes them an artist 10 times marketable too. Like uh, like Southside and uh, and working with G Herbo and just all types of shit. Just uh -huh. people come together in future. Yeah. The way they, they just pumping out albums. It's just, it's marketable. It's a different type of connection. People can feel the music different, you know, than just, like we were just talking about this the other day, just playing beats. Just, instead of just playing beats, you could actually work and make a craft together mm. versus just click, play, do you like it? Click, play, another beat, do you like it? It's different. Definitely. So wait, are you, you have a label, like you're really pushing the label side of things? Because I've seen a video that was like King Yellow says he signed to Ruga. How does that work when you guys have known um, each other forever? We basically, um, we got J Jaha Entertainment. That's my label. That's me. You know the group. You know what I'm saying? You got JHE Devo. J.H.E. Fat A, J.H.E. E. Well, he is the creator of Jet High Entertainment. Okay. So E. Well is the one who kind of recorded for damn near the whole Chicago. Everybody know E. Well. You heard it on Duck Songs. Hey, E. Well, I don't want to auto tune. Right. That's E. Well. You know what I'm saying? He made the label, and we just been running with it ever since. But Yella, that's my boy. But Yella, he was trolling, playing and shit. Oh, I saying um, he signed to you? Yeah, he just playing. I was right there with him when he did that shit. We was playing and shit. But um, um, shit, yeah, yeah, I've been trying to get artists, you know what I'm saying, from Chicago, certain artists, and just keep building and try to, you know what I'm saying, keep the legacy going. Definitely, for sure. It's good to hear. Um, okay, your name came up in a very, very popular interview that happened recently. Dirk did an interview with Academics, and Academics was asking him about certain things that may have transpired were basically Derek was saying that there was a big show in Chicago that Kanye did. He wanted Dirk to come out. You were going to be there too. Dirk realized and was like, no, it ain't happening. Making it sound like he was, he was all right with being on the same project as you, but the idea of him being in the same place as you was out of line. Am I getting this right? Yeah, but it was just, just the thing. It was like that on both parties. Okay. Like that on my end too. But so when you got the invite, you were can. automatically huh? thinking like, eh, I don't know. Nah, I wasn't. Now nah, he ain't necessarily say like he dudes gonna be there. But when I got there, I got the list, looking at the album and just looking at all the names that's on it, and I did see his name, and it's just like, you know what I'm saying? I'm here, shit. I'm working. I don't really ain't nothing gonna stop my opportunities, bro. Oh, we bump shoulders. We bump shoulders. It is what it is. I wasn't like, I'm working. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, I'm writing music, and I'm and I'm, I'm I'm just working. Right, but so you wouldn't have been worried about running into him because he he to him that was like reason enough to not go based on what he said. I wasn't worried. No, hell no. Even if I did, like, like I say, shit. But you can't. 
going into that kind of environment, you can't necessarily go into the environment the way that you would want to, right? You can't have 10 homies with you and you can't have yeah. this and that with you, right? Yeah. You could? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm picturing it kind of being like a more closed Honestly, thing. Honestly, when I got around Kanye, I knew more people than anything. Like, a lot of people I knew from Chicago and shit. Ye is well connected. Like, with Chicago, people would just be thinking Ye just don't reach back. Ye really reach back to a lot of people from the rack. Like, mm-hmm. for real. And it's people that I know with Ye, like, that know my parents and shit. Really? You know what I'm saying? That that grew up with them back then. You know what I'm saying? They all, everybody connected. Mm-hmm. So I knew a lot of people. Like, it was, it was love, bro. I wasn't I wasn't thinking about that shit, mm-hmm. honestly. That was my last, the last thing on my mind. I'm, I'm writing music for the biggest artists in the game. Like, I'm in here, you know what I'm saying? Writing, I'm on the album. I'm not thinking about that shit. Right. It's the last thing on my mind. No, definitely. That's good. Um, did you listen to the Dirk album? What? Which album? The what new album? one, Almost Healed. Nah, I ain't listened. To you passed that? Like, I heard. You know the song that's out. The J Cole song. Yeah, I heard that, but nah, I ain't listened to it. Okay, you're past listening to your ops music at this point. No, nah, I, I listen. I like I say, I listen to what's whatever. Like if it come to me, I listen to some. If it's good music, I don't give a fuck what it is, man. But like, I ain't got no ops. Okay. I ain't got no ops, man. Really? No. But you have people that, if you were to see them, it would be a whole thing. No. Who? Well, the Dirk thing right there that we were just discussing seems like an example, right? It's more so, man. Like I say, bro, we're going to trip forward looking backwards. Trip forward looking backwards. It is hard to walk looking backwards, I guess. Yeah. I see that happen to my kids. She'll be running along and she'll just start looking at something else and then all of a sudden she eats shit because she's not focused on where she's going. It's a pretty good example of what you're talking about, right? Yeah, but mm, I don't be, bro, like on some real shit, like, I, like it's like people be like bringing up that shit like with, with, with us and dude and them. Like, it's like, it's like people just can't get over it. Like mm. the 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 beef, the, the why? Like I just can't. I don't understand it. It's like a lot of people just cannot get past that shit. Like just talking about it. Like I don't know, bro. That shit. Like oh, bro. I'm motherfuckers. Be I be with my son, bro. I be walking my son down the street with his bike and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Making sure he have a good life. I don't be thinking about that shit. So when it get brought up, it's like. Well, you've been removed from it for a few years now, right? Hmm? You've been out of Chicago for a few years, yeah, so it's especially just, like yeah. this must seem kind of bizarre to you, right? Yeah, it's just more so. I'm just, you know, it's like a it's like a cloud that's over you that just people just won't stop bringing around and bringing. It's like, all right, motherfuckers is growing. That's all it's about growth and development, man. When's the last growing. time you put a diss song out? It ain't been, ain't been that long. Probably, I don't I don't know, bro. I was yeah, I, I was listening to Posse Cuts with you and these guys that are on your label or whatever, and they fucking are still talking about all kinds of people, right? Who? I forget exactly, but I know I heard a bunch of that shit when I was listening on to On the them. songs? Yeah. Yeah, you know, motherfucker gonna talk they shit. You know how that shit go. And how are you gonna judge an interviewer when we ask about it? I ain't judging you. It's just more but you're so, like, oh, how could they be so fascinated by it? But at the same time, I mean, this is when you go in to make content, it quite often comes up, right? It's more so just the thing. Like, it's not just that a uh, one side that just do it. You know what I'm saying? Right. But at the end of the day, some people don't sit around and think about that shit all day. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It's like, that shit ain't about nothing. I can't wait to ask King Yella about the line. He made a channel trying to get some veneers. Yeah. I mean, that was, that, I'm not going to lie, that was a pretty funny diss. I don't know if that's like actually how that happened, but kind of got a chuckle out of me even before I realized it was about him. Mm. <laughs> You're never going to make a YouTube channel? I should. A YouTube channel? I got yeah. a YouTube channel, like as far as for music. But are you ever going to post up and 
plop the camera down and make a video talking about like this, like a podcast. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe oh, I've been thinking about doing one with my son. Me and my son make a podcast together. Really? We gonna play Legos or something? Hmm. You gonna play Legos on camera or something? Might do. How old is he? He five. Yeah, I don't know. Five year old on a podcast might be kind of tough. Never know. As long as it's positive, you know what I'm saying? Right. Kid friendly. You play your music around him and stuff? Some of it. Some of it, like, that's too explicit and too. Mm. I don't play that. He can't listen to that. Okay. Nah, he ain't. He can't even watch no TV shows that just too, you know what I'm saying? So your your girl's on it like that? She, we are on it. You're on it as well. We're on it. My girl is definitely the stricter of us. Yeah. When I play the drill music and whatnot, she will definitely be the one to turn it off. Yeah, because it's like they pick up, they kids are sponges, bro. They soak mm. up every fucking thing, and then they talk a lot. So he go to school a lot, so I don't need my son at school talking about this type of shit or just speaking on that. He shouldn't even be, that's nothing he should even be talking about. You know what I'm saying? Mm. But I try to keep him off of that shit. I don't even let him watch YouTube. Like, he watched YouTube probably like weekends, you know what I'm saying? Like he, certain shows, you know what I'm saying? But nah, YouTube, it'd be too much going on. I got to make like a kid burner YouTube account to keep logged in on my TV because at some point my kid is going to realize that my face and also her mother's face are in the thumbnails of a lot of videos on the channel. As soon as she can read, it's over. I got to find all kinds of ways to make sure that she can't read the titles of the random videos about us on YouTube. <laughs> It gets crazy, That's what, and that's what I'm saying. It's like when you got a kid involved, bro, it get different. It's mm -hmm. like you kind of got to make that decision, like is this something I want to do or is this something? I don't know. It's like a, it, nobody could tell you how to feel or what to do, you know what I'm saying? But it's a deep-ass situation to think about. Like I had to do that with my son, you know what I'm saying? Like with moving out of Chicago and just – trying to do something different, you know what I'm saying? Be a better father figure for him. You know what I'm saying? And, mm -hmm. Shit get tough when you're a father, bro. Mm, definitely. Um, I wanted to ask about this. There was a clip of Tay Savage talking about you helping him fight behind bars. You have any recollection of this? Um, yeah, that was like that was a while ago. That was like 2010. Wow, 20, really? No, nah, no. Nah, I want to say... Locked up October 2010. That was like 2011, beginning of 2011. A motherfucker, um, you know, back then I ain't. He was. We was never beefing with with Tay Savage. Them. You see what I'm saying? Okay. Like I got a homie who brothered them from over that type shit. Like 2010 but, is like a billion fucking years ago before I everything did, started, right? Meet him and uh, he was cool. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't no smoke or nothing. He was just cool. And we was on the school wing. And uh, we was all in class, mm -hmm. and a motherfucker ran in the classroom. It's just a natural instinct, as a as a wing. The whole damn the whole wing was in there for, was whooping dude ass because it's like you ran from another wing to our wing and punched the motherfucker in the classroom. You're saying like, they were all fighting Tay Savage? Or they were fighting someone no, else? No, one person ran in the classroom from okay. another wing, and and tried to hit him. You feel me? And, it's just natural instinct. We all sitting right next to each other, so everybody just got the roll in his ass. We got the roll in his ass because it's just it was like kind of a wing thing. We stuck together as a wing, mm. the whole little deck. But yeah, it was just I, it was a relationship with him. You know what I'm saying? He was cool. But yeah, we rolled dude ass with folks to him. <laughs> we beat his ass. Is that wild to even have shit like that coming out? In interviews and stuff, to have this like ancient ass fucking stories <laughs> just being passed down like that, you probably hadn't thought It'd about it in like ten that. years. I I honestly forgot about that shit. I'm like, damn, I'm fucked up. We did roll his ass. Right. Wow. Small yeah, world. Yeah. Small world. When's the last time you were locked up? I ain't been locked up since I've been locked up. Bro, Ruga is a changed man. You're like a monk these days, bro. You just come in with this very like calm. High as fuck energy. You're like, I don't know. I never heard of that guy. I never, I never had anything to do with this. This is. I be chilling, bro. I'm told you, I ain't no. You know what? This shit ain't. This shit I'll always be in me. But I'm grown as hell, bro. Mm -hmm. like, I'm, 
got a, you know what I'm saying? I got a family. This shit real, man. It's like, you just got to wake up, man, some days and no. Yeah, like I say, everything don't need a reaction. You just gotta. That's the type of time I'm on, bro. I don't give a. I'm at a point where I don't give a fuck what nobody think or what nobody got to say. I'm with my family straight and I'm straight, and my team we good. I ain't worried about that shit, bro. The show. How you feel about uh, the the overwhelming new trend in hip hop of snitching? It's taking over. Yeah, hey, hey out here. It's a lot of they ass. <laughs> For real, they they deep. <laughs> you see the rich homie Quan footage that came out yesterday? Nah, I ain't see that. That's some of the wildest shit I heard so far. Because it got lurked, or it got leaked right out of the police department. But this my th- yeah, that's my question though. Like, how the fuck is all this evidence shit is getting to into people's hands where they could post it? Mm-hmm. First of all. How is somebody even getting this shit from a police station, like, or just probably an employee who has access to all of it? You know, but it's like, ain't that's illegal? Yes. Like to basically, you put something out of a person snitching or whatever, and now they in jeopardize of dying out here because not. So it's like kind of they fault of loosely getting that. Even though it's good, it'd be good to get out there because you know who the fuck the snitches is. Mm-hmm. But. That shit be crazy on both ends, bro. That shit, wow. Because the other thing is it's like not only is it illegal for them to do so, but you could potentially, if you were like an employee at the police station who happened to be leaking footage of witnesses talking about what they saw, you could be putting their life in danger. But you're also creating a climate in which no rational person is going to want to give a statement on the stand or whatever. So you might be taking a fucking criminal case that the state ha- or has spent millions of dollars on and just completely jeopardizing it and making it so that they're not going to be able to get a conviction in the same way that they wanted to, which is great for the, the rapper or the, you know, potential criminal who's being accused of something. But, you know, from the perspective of them, that's fucking crazy. Like, that's like, you know, I don't know how much time they could potentially end up facing, but it could be, like, really bad. And But that's like, they were. Just, I was just having that conversation with Brick Baby. He's talking about... How in Atlanta, I mean, Atlanta is like the blackest city in America, I believe. Yeah. So, you know, even if, like, that police department, think about how many fucking random black dudes who got love for Thug work there. I'm not saying that only a black dude could have love for him or whatever, but, like, you know there's some people in there who got some kind of connection to all these different dudes. And it's like, it would be pretty fucking easy to be like, hey, copy that fucking file to a hard drive and then we'll, we're going to send it out on YouTube or whatever and let everybody know about how somebody's telling. I mean, I don't know. I don't know, man. Shit be crazy, man. This is wicked out here, man. You got to be careful. That's a fact. Um, if Gunna was part of your crew and he had given that statement that he gave where he basically said that the label was a criminal organization, is that if you were a young thug in this example, would that be enough for you to never want to do business with him again or ne- you wouldn't be cool anymore? I ain't gonna lie, bro. That's that situation is Atlanta business. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Let them handle it how they handle it. You feel me? I'm from the rack. I don't know nothing about their case, man. Mm-hmm. Honestly, I see what I see on the internet, but I don't know, bro. I can't say, bro. That's some whole Atlanta shit. But you ever go back to the rack these days? Yeah, or I you visit. Just leave it alone? I do my thing. I visit. I be in, you know, visit family and shit. Yeah, yeah. Where I'm from. Okay. I'm always in the rack. I like it. What uh what do we have to look out for? What what do you got planned for the near future? I've really got um I've been investing into my trucking company. You know what I'm saying? I got a rental car service. I've been um I got working on my album. You know what I'm saying? Me and Ye, we working be we got a new album shit coming. You're still working with Ye? Yeah, I never stopped. What like, kind of stuff you working on? I just don't post shit, bro. I don't be, I don't care for posting and all that, bro. That shit don't matter to me. You just writing from home, or do you go out there and tap in with them? I tap in like all the time. You know what I'm saying? It's just we writing. You know what I'm saying? We ain't, ain't nothing to really be working. How do you feel about the cancellation of Kanye West? It's been pretty extreme over the last year or two. 
I don't think you could cancel him. Well, large percentages of his business seem like they've been kind of ripped away from him. So maybe not entirely cancel him, but when you could take like every fashion brand that's ever worked with him and none of them feel comfortable continuing a relationship with him because of the pressure that they get put on him by the Anti-Defamation League and whatnot, I mean, that's an example in which, you know, his canceling was pretty but serious. But when you make, when you up, Multi-billion dollars, bro. Ain't nobody you give no fuck, bro. Motherfuckers, that man gonna eat, sleep, shit the same, man. Yeah? Yeah. If you if you had multi-billion dollars, would you give a fuck? Yeah, but in his case, it's more like he had multiple billions of dollars, and then maybe now he has, you know, a couple hundred million or 400 maybe. million. or I'm not sure, but. That's the internet. You go. Everybody going off the internet. You don't know. Bro. If I had two billion and then all of a sudden I had four hundred million, I'd probably be like, "Well, what the fuck?" They got How do me. you know that? I'm just that's that's estimates I've seen in the media. I'm not saying it's accurate, that's but if that was that's stuff that people control that the narrative of their own. If he ain't posted it, you can't believe that shit, bro. Like you can't believe the internet. Bro. But I think he's acknowledged that he's taken some pretty massive L's financially as a result of this. I don't know, man. He just blames it on the Jews. I don't know, man. I, I might tell you I took a L, but be playing with what I'm, you, it's, you, you gotta give them an overplay for the underplay, bro. Don't nobody, ain't nobody gonna tell you what they working with, bro. Reset their expectations or what? If if you could, if he if he could say if he could say that on the internet and say I this I lost this and and you on the interview saying like he may have this, he he did exactly what he was supposed to do, shit. He made people think this, that, and make it be. I'm telling you, bro, like, people could say anything and you, people just believe it. You never know what a person working with, bro. Mm. I wonder when he's going to decide to release music, though. You don't have any kind of insight on that? You just working on you, shit? You're working on the album. Right. But you you help him write shit? We working on the album. Mm. You got a contract? You got NDA? We working on the album. You're working on the album. Yeah. What about Digi Prada? Is he on the album? Digi you, Prada, you what I him just tell you, Digi? He literally just said send some beats so I could put him in the right place. That's what he said? Yeah, right before the interview. Mm. Told him that. Like, Cause it's that time, you know what I'm saying? It ain't just Funky about Man's me. Revenge. It ain't just about me, you know, like, <laughs> like for real, like, like, you never know. I might be around Ye and pull out a beat and he might like it and it's Digi's. That shit could change Digi life. You never know. Like that's just how it is, bro. You gotta keep working, getting your people involved, and that's what we own. Nah, definitely. That's a fact. Do you think that Jay Main and King Yellow's beef is real? How serious should I take this conflict? I don't know. I think you gotta ask Yellow. That I, I can't say. Bro. I will when he's in here momentarily. I will ask him. Yeah, you gotta ask Yellow, bro. He uh, elaborated for you. I seen King Yellow at the Porn Awards. Not actually in the porn too. awards, but he was in the lobby of I one of the parties. I just missed you. You really? Remember, I called you that day. Did you? You remember, bro? I was like, "What's up? you out here in Vegas?" Oh, okay. He was yeah, like, yeah. "Um, I just left." Oh. You probably was lit that day or something. And didn't remember. I don't get See, lit. See, your friend called you. You don't even remember me calling you. This is crazy. This is how Adam do me. G. It's messed up. When you I'm in porn world, call him, man. porn world is hard for me to like adjust to like being a hip hop guy as well. You know. Nah, for sure. When I'm in that porno world, I gotta try to impress all these fucking girls with fake boobs and shit. You know, I gotta. It's a different, different level. Then I come back here, I'm right back in the streets. So you just be acting crazy, huh? No, you you acting crazy with. I was out there for a week straight. I didn't fuck anybody the whole time, because that was my girl. That's real shit, though. It's good y'all got an understanding, though, because yeah. What? Cause yeah, cause I ain't you know I, I don't I ain't into the type of things. Me and my girl, we straight. Yeah, yeah, we ain't. It's hard for me to remember sometimes that the average person's relationship is like super controlling. And I, I mean, I have friends who I see like, you know, the girl would be yelling at him for even looking at another girl. So the fact that my girl can watch me eat another girl's ass right in front of her, it's crazy. And that newfoundedly, I can. Watch her get piped down by a, a large man, large gentleman. 
fucking crazy, man. <laughs> you know, it's all business. It's crazy, man. <laughs> it's all business. <laughs> you let a motherfucker get up in there, Joe. Doing some renovating. Yeah. That's a little dangerous, though. You got to be careful about them, man. I told her that. I'm like, we're playing with fire. You got to really communicate if we want to make this thing work. Let a, let a black motherfucker get up in there. It'll get real. And they might never come back. <laughs> what they say. Once you go black, can't You think that's back. real? Yeah, all right. I think a lot of girls have gone black and came back. But now, though, um, you know what pisses me off is seeing these white bitches on fucking Twitter accusing me of being racist for saying BBC. I don't think so. I'm not buying it. I don't know if we should be talking about that. No. Yeah. I'm just like, this, this is not very convincing to me. Like, I don't. Yeah. I don't know how you we gonna get tell me? to that. Like, <laughs> that was too fast, bro. Too fast. <laughs> you moving fast, bro. <laughs> <laughs> ain't that the truth uh anything else that we should know about what we got going on here guys um what an edible what happened to your edibles man last we time don't we have that sponsor edibles, anymore bro. that's a good point though we need a new one you could have went and just bought me some edibles bro i didn't know you're still on that type of time it's and i don't want you to pass it. out on the drive home this is how adam do me bro this my man's though you were incapacitated last time I was good though. They had to put you in a wheelchair and get your ass out of here. No, nah, they didn't. No, but it but was like you, it was uh, nearly that. You was asking some good, some crazy questions last time. Yeah, bro, the edibles were kicking my ass. Bro, where the gun go? The drum? The other gun? Where the pipe go? I seen the pipe in here. Yeah, well. That would be interesting to see what happened if I put that inside my gun, but I'm not going to do that right now on camera. It seems irresponsible. Yo, lighter? Huh? That was a lighter, wasn't it? The lighter? The gun lighter. Do we have a gun lighter? I mean, we got another extendo clip right here. No, I saw like the... With the uh, oh, they do have that out there, yeah, but not right here. Uh, it's probably confusing to some people that they walk by the design section of the office and there's a bunch this of... This shit fucked my head up for a second. I was... Took you back to the old times? Well, Adam on, man. Yeah. Remind yeah. you? Hmm? Reminds you of what it used to be like, doing drills and without a care in the world. Not to put that evil on you. Nah, man. <laughs> when I ain't been in it, I ain't in it, man. <sighs> but show. Um, all right. Appreciate you guys coming through. We filled in some very important lore. Needed to Bro, be spilled. All the fans out needed there, they needed to, to hear it. They needed to hear it. Yeah. All right. Ruga, did you Prada? Thank you. Appreciate you guys coming through. Shout out to everybody who watched this. You are truly heroes. Smash the like button. We out.